the Lotus and Jackson in Chicago's Austin neighborhood. One of the police station in South Austin where police are still trying to find that driver. This morning, officers in Chicago's Austin neighborhood say they were forced to fire. Shot after an officer involved shooting this morning in the South Austin neighborhood. CBS burglary at a footwear store in the Austin neighborhood. Take a look there. Chicago's Austin neighborhood are searching for several people in the deadly beating of a young man. The homicide, one of several violent incidents under over an unseasonably warm weekend. Austin, the Austin community is, is, is flat. It's flat. If I had to sum it up in two words, it would be a combination of silk and finesse. I mean, the whole, uh, the swag, you know what I mean? The way we greet each other, uh, 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 the way we dance, the music that we lean towards, you know what I mean? The whole swag is, is, is uh, it's something fresh, man. I was you know fighting. I, mean? I stayed at the next block over, Massasoit, 956 North Massasoit. Man, it was like, Beautiful, man. It was like a whole nother world, man. I'm like, me being African-American, man, it was predominantly white. Every day was like a new adventure. The West Side is um, memories. The West Side is home and um, predictable home. The West Side is my home. The West Side is a lot of undiagnosed uh, issues. This day and age, the West Side is like a battlefield like Iraq. Why? Um, just twice this week there was a massive shooting, one at Garfield Park with seven individuals shot, um, two died and five more is you know still um, shot up. Um, right behind it the next day, Tuesday, there was four individuals shot. Um, within 24 hours, like 11 people were shot. You know, that's like some St. Valentine's Day massacre type stuff. There is a group of Westsiders who meet on Saturdays at Sankofa Cultural Arts and Business Center, a reentry circle formed through the National Alliance for the Empowerment of the Formerly Incarcerated. These men and women are sitting amongst each other, deciding how to fight against recidivism violence and for the west side even uh you know and, and i guess i do have to first say you know I'm, I'm thankful that my father is here and uh you know for many many years been active in the struggle and uh tell me you know i told him won't you just take it easy go sit down but he said he on the battlefield and you know he ain't going nowhere and when Dr. King came he already had on me because i could always call him on me together to do whatever was necessary and get that community together. But you can't be and you being scared come to shoot in when you're scared you just stay at home, stay out of the way. That's right, that's right. Yeah. That's what you do. But if you want to get on this battlefield, then you take the circle. Reverend Parker, Reverend Parker, I just want to say thank you for coming and for your comments. Uh, it, it's always good to know some of the history of what's been going on in our communities in order for us to move forward with some educated uh, information. These shootings is a result of conditions, frustration, built up anger, a lot of trauma. A lot of our young men are under that under the influence of, of some mind move altering substance when they make when they commit these type of uh, 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 crimes, especially with the violence piece. Like I say, it makes total sense to them. Culturally, that's the problem because we have jobs, we have resources for guys that, that want jobs. The Institute of Nonviolence getting guys right off the street and getting them jobs. But why does the killing keep, keep happening? Because you got guys that don't re want resources. You got guys that don't want to stop shooting. They don't want jobs. So how do we reach them? Got to change the culture. First of all, about being Chicago and being labeled as one of the toughest cities to live in. With that being said, it's a lot of pride taken into the negative image way before the 21st century even came. We're only 18 years into the 21st century. With that being said, it's a lot of people in this world that like to glorify the negative things to get whatever it is they can to get what we call uh, a like. 
in this world, in the 21st century. A lot of them didn't know where a lot of their arrogance come from. A lot of them didn't know how to walk in life because they never was taught anything. They never had a true beginning. So now they they walk through life with, with a chip on their shoulder, but they never understand where their anger comes from. And, and that makes them desensitized to what goes on in their community. The people now, um, they don't even have the patience to even talk stuff out, you know, to talk things out. You can, uh, I guess, look at somebody wrong and they're ready to get a firearm. You can step on somebody's feet instead of them saying, I'm sorry, he's reaching for a gun. Um, I don't know exactly when it got like that, but it's at the point now where at the drop of a hat, you know, it's gun smoke. Well, we, we talking about abroad of the Austin community. Um, Austin community is one of the highest homicide communities in the state of Illinois. Why is that? I have no clue. But my theory is, where are all these guns coming from? Yeah, drugs played a part of the poverty and all that, and was, you know, the youth now. Mom, dad on drugs, mom on drugs, dad locked up. Now the streets got the youth. And they had no respect for the elders because this is all they know. Cedric Fryson is an outreach specialist for the Ready Chicago Anti-Violence Initiative who was born and raised in the Austin community. His life's work is changing and saving the lives of the community through mentorship and advocacy. Basically what it is, we work with a population of young men between the ages of like 17 and 30 who are at high risk for gun violence or violence or at high risk to be a victim. And so when we find these young men, you got to keep in mind that we're my, I'm, make, I'm gonna make an attempt to uh, convince them to abandon the one thing that they probably more sure about than anything, and that's their way of life and the culture that they wrapped up in. So it's a struggle, you know what I'm saying? It can get overwhelming sometimes because I'm right on the front line with the grief, with the families. And you know, coming together is great, but like uh, George said, if there's not a next, you know, it kind of makes it irrelevant to meet in the first place. The marches on, on the expressway and shutting that down and all that. You know, well, you know, I got some opinions about it, but I keep it to myself. But we're dealing with a lot of brokenness. It's like we got to get to the root of that. You know, it's a lot of brokenness that's going on. And as, it's, as the saying is, when you know better, you'll do better. If you've never been raised that way, you don't know about more values. You don't love yourself. You you have no problem at all at taking another one's life. So that's where we gotta come in and show that love. So we need people that's gonna be really trained in conflict resolution. You need people that's gonna be uh, self-defense trained. In case something do happen, you can probably defend yourself. You know, like, and then you gotta have credibility. So when they out there, they know you're not just talking. And see, because a lot of us still have to be out here the next day. That's right. See, that's another thing. You got to be out here the next day. And so I ain't running nowhere, and a lot of people I can look around in the room. So I think we should, we should start there. We should start with the mental health. Um, and it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure in the community. Everybody want to have something. It's like the opportunities aren't there, or it's like the resources aren't there. So when we think about the victim, we often think it's the person who just gets shot. But the victim is this, in the family, it's their right. friends, right? So this is what the influence is coming from because they want retaliation. You know, they want retribution. So we have to be able to educate them. And we need a mass response in our own community, a mass response to this seven, what just happened. Because to me, it's like we letting it go if we don't, if we don't say something, if we don't do something. And a mass response is just, a mass demonstration. Since the most violent weekend in the city this year, only one alleged shooter has been charged. According to the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Police Department solved about 17% of homicides that occurred in 2017. This is also known as the clearance rate. The rate is still this low today. In 2016, only 5% of shootings were cleared. Everybody goes no win situation. Because I done lost my son and the person that got caught, he done lost his life to the system. So we can, we can target the shooters or whatever. But the key thing is we need to hit the ones before they get engaged with them. 
All right, seeing this is what I've been doing. I've been getting, trying to get all the shorties before the gang get them, and guess what they do? They end up bringing their brothers, which is a shooter or a gang member, with them, because now they want to know where you've been. We got to educate them, they can get jobs. See, that's what I have used to come in real good with that. But you know, this stuff you can't do it by yourself. You hear me? You got to be a team player with us. So that's, that's, that's the last thing. Like with what you do down there, a lot of them little guys ain't conscious that it's a million, multi-million dollar project going on right in their neighborhoods. If, if anything I want people to know about the Austin community is that we're a community of resilience. Community, of, of, it's, it's a melting pot of, of different flavors, you know what I mean? And, and, and there's some good people here, man. Some good people from the young to the old. Everybody's represented from the younger, middle strength, older strength. So this violence on this west side is, is real. I mean, it's so random. Uh, I lost my best friend on March 18th, right there at the intersection of Lake and Central, which is a known hot intersection. People have been killed there before. And um, it's just so random, so unexpected. You never know when the last time you're gonna speak to somebody or see someone. Uh, I was just with my buddy a half hour before he was killed. I had just dropped him off. I was with him when I heard his son call him and say he's ready to, to get picked up. So he was just taking his son to the airport of all places to drop him back off from being up here for spring break. And they just made one stop to get some chips. And, you know, it just shattered my world and people's world. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, he wasn't in the streets. He wasn't a gang member. He wasn't, didn't have a past in the streets. This guy was 30, 40 years right here in the Austin area and got killed randomly just being at the wrong place at the wrong time in a neighborhood that he knew very, very well. So it's just, you know, you know, you left to pick up the pieces, you know. It's not just only him. It's, you know, he had kids. He had family. He had friends. And so we all at a loss. And that's why, you know, this violence is just, I mean, in the community, it's, it's drastic. I mean, it's, it leaves people at a loss. Actually, it's f***ed up, quite honestly. 